Macmillan Audio presents Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adayemi. Read for you by Bonnie Turpin. Chapter 1 Zeli. I try not to think of him, but when I do, I hear the tides. Baba was with me the first time I heard them, the first time I felt them. They called out to me like a lullaby, leading us away from the forest path and toward the sea. The ocean breeze ruffled the loose coils in my hair. Rays of sun spilled through the thinning leaves. I didn't know what we would find, what strange wonder that lullaby would hold. I just knew I had to get to it. It was like the tides held a missing piece of my soul. When we finally saw it, my small hand slipped out of Baba's. My mouth fell open with awe. There was magic in that water. The first magic I'd felt since the king's men killed Mama. Zeli, Rorao, Baba called as I drifted toward the tides. I flinched when the sea foam washed over my toes. The lakes in Ibadan were always cold, but that water was warm like the smell of Mama's rice, as warm as the glow of her smile. Baba followed me in and lifted his head to the sky. It was like he could taste the sun. In that moment, he grabbed my hand, laced his bandaged fingers between mine, and stared into my eyes. It was then that I knew, even if Mama was gone, we still had each other. We could survive. But no. I opened my eyes to the cold, gray sky, to the howling ocean, crashing against Jimeta's rocky bluffs. I can't stay in the past. I can't keep my father alive. The ritual that costs Baba his life haunts me as I prepare to lay him to rest. My heart hangs with all the pain he endured, every sacrifice he made so that I could bring magic back. It's okay. My older brother Zane stands by my side and offers me his hand. A shadow of a beard wraps around his dark brown skin. The new hair almost masks how tight his clenched jaw truly is. He squeezes his palm against mine as the gentle mist transforms into a pelting rain. The downpour chills us to the bone. It's like even the gods can't help but mourn. I'm sorry, I think, to Baba's spirit, wishing I could say it to his face. As we pull on the rope keeping his casket tethered to Jimeta's rocky coast, I wonder why I thought burying one parent would prepare me to bury the next. My hands still shake with all the things left unsaid. My throat burns from the screams I force into silent tears. I try to keep it all inside as I reach for the jar filled with the last of our burial oil. Be careful. Zane warns, as the tremor in my hand makes drops of oil spill over the jar's rim. After three weeks of bartering to get enough to soak Baba's casket, the rippling liquid feels more precious than gold. Its sharp smell burns my nostrils as I pour the last of it onto our burial torch. Tears stream down Zane's face when he strikes the flint. With no time to waste... I prepare the words of the Ibukun, a special blessing a reaper must pass to the dead. From the gods comes the gift of life. I whisper the Yoruba, to the gods, that gift must be returned. The incantation sounds strange on my lips. Until a few weeks ago, no reaper had the magic to perform an Ibukun for eleven years.